Alright, in this example I'm going to demonstrate how to use a pivot table to quickly summarize your data. You'll note we've got Excel open and we've got some data here. You'll note that each column has a header that's very important. You'll see that I've got a uh, date and on the same date I have several different values. This is wind direction, wind speed. Let's say I want to know the average wind speed on each day. Um, I could set up a formula, you know, equals average and select these. It would take forever. You've got so many of these. A pivot table is a much better solution. So I'm going to go to my data, click in the upper left corner of it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and control shift right arrow to select all the way to the right and then control shift down arrow to select all the way to the bottom. You don't necessarily have to select all your data. I just like to do it. Then I'm going to go to insert pivot table and it says select a table or range. I've already, you can see that my range is selected. Um, I want to put it in a new worksheet. So these are the defaults and I'm just going to go ahead and accept them. And here's my pivot table. Now, if you're using, let me shrink this so you can see the whole thing. There we go. If you're using uh, Excel 2007 or newer, they have a different look to the pivot table. So if your pivot table doesn't look like this, you need to go to pivot table, options, display, and then you need to check the box for classic pivot table layout. I like the classic pivot table layout. If I uncheck this, see this is what the new one looks like. And it works just fine too. I just like the classic layout. I think it's easier to understand. So I'll go to options, display, and I'm going to check the classic pivot table layout. And from here on, when I use Excel on this computer, it should automatically choose the classic layout. Okay, so you see it's got drop your row fields here, drop your data items here, drop your column fields here. So you just drag and drop. So I come over here, I'm going to grab date, and I can drag it here. And you see that each unique value of date is automatically entered in the rows. Pretty nice. And I want the mean speed on each date, so I'm going to take speed, and I'm going to drag it and I'm going to drop it where it says drop data items here. Now you see that it automatically calculates the sum of speed. So this is the sum of all values of speed for January 1, 2010. Well that's not a number that's any use, but I can double click here and there are several different values I can use to populate this column. I want the average, so I change to average, I hit OK, and now I have the average speed for each day. Really nice. And so I can go ahead and copy. Now it, for some reason I can't really copy the headers, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to select the top two cells, control shift down, select all the data, control C, then I'm going to make a new worksheet, control V to paste. If I click in this upper cell I select the whole worksheet you see how my arrow turns to a different kind of arrow? Now I double click and it resizes to fit all the data. And then I can go ahead and label them. Date, average, speed. Now if I come back to my pivot table, I can double click here and I can change this to the count. So if I want to know the end size for each day, now I have the end size. So now all I have to do is control shift down arrow, control C, control V to paste, and now I have the sample size. So on a, uh, January 1 I had 72 readings. The average of those 72 readings was 10.5. How quick is that? Go back to the pivot table, double click, choose standard deviation or you know just anything that you want but standard deviation is the best select control shift down arrow control C come to the worksheet select that cell control V label it SD and here I have 
mean standard deviation sample size on each date just that quickly. One last thing to show you. Um, you can do several different combinations. So let's change this back to the average. And let's say I wanted to find out the average speed for each direction on each day. I can take direction and drag it up here and all the unique values of direction are in that top row. So you see it goes from 10 to 360. And then you see that on January 1st I don't have any values. And wind never blew from 10 degrees, never blew from 20 degrees, never blew from 30 degrees. But if I move over eventually you see that the wind blew from 270 degrees and the average speed on that date from that direction was 9.5 miles an hour average speed from 280 degrees was 11.4 you see how it's breaking down that daily average based upon what I dropped in that top so you can break down your results that way and you see the grand average is the same as what we had before so sometimes the way it calculates the average is not exactly what you want but in general if you need a quick and dirty way to get some summary data the pivot table is the way to go